In this presentation, we will allocate overhead to jobs using a predetermined overhead rate, which we will see how to calculate. First, we want to take a look at the overhead process, the procedures that the overhead will go through in order to record the overhead and then allocate the overhead. The first thing we're going to do at the beginning of a time period, at the beginning of a month or period, is to set the predetermined rate. Then we're going to go ahead and record the actual overhead that we are going to incur, and then we're going to apply estimated overhead to specific jobs. Now note that these two don't necessarily happen one after the other, but it's useful to think of them happening one after the other because it's useful and that's how we've presented it here. We've taken a look at the recording of actual overhead so far because we can think of that being the issue we're gonna have. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. The overhead that we're going to incur, indirect labor, indirect uh, materials, and all the other stuff that's going to be in the overhead bucket, which we're then going to have to apply in some way to the jobs. Now, as we go through the month, however, remember that these two things are kind of happening at the same time, meaning we're incurring overhead costs all the time. Anything that's a cost on the factory is a form of overhead cost, and we're working on jobs and therefore applying the overhead all the time. So we first need to do at the beginning of the month is really set the predetermined overhead rate so we have it at any given time. Anytime we have a job, we can't really wait to know what overhead's going to be at the end of the month. That's not, that's not something we can do. What we need to do is look at some type of estimate from the prior time period and estimates going forward. So we're probably going to use information from the past and basically projections in the future to determine what the overhead will be and use some type of rate, some type of estimate that we're then going to use to apply out the overhead as we go. Because we, we can't apply out the overhead on the actual numbers here because the month isn't over yet. And until the month is over, we don't really know what overhead is going to be. So we have to use this estimate. So we need this estimate kind of at the beginning of the month. We need to project the estimate. And then we're going to record the actual overhead that we have within the overhead but we're also going to apply out as we go, as we go through the month, as we get new jobs, we're going to apply overhead out as we go. And then we're going to have the adjust the under overhead because this is an estimate, because we're going to make here a predetermined overhead estimate and apply out the overhead to jobs based on that estimate. And then we're going to have an under over applied amount and we're going to have to deal with that in some way. We'll have some type of adjusting entry here. So at this point, we're, we're really looking to set the predetermined overhead rate so that we can apply out the estimated overhead. And I wanted to put these two together because although this is done first, typically I want to have these two together because they kind of apply to each other. We want to set the rate in order to apply out the overhead to jobs. So we're going to set the predetermined overhead rate. So the predetermined overhead rate formula is simply going to be the estimated overhead cost divided by the estimated activity base. So first, what does that mean? Estimated overhead cost. What we would like to do is have the actual overhead cost, of course, but if we're talking about this month of operations, we don't know what the actual overhead cost is going to be. And, uh, you know, we, we might be able to say what it is up until this point. It might include uh, indirect materials, indirect labor, some of the stuff might be in there, but it's not going to include those things like depreciation, which we don't record until the end of the month. It's not going to include like utilities on, on the factory, which isn't in there until the end of the month. Those things need to be allocated out as well. So we can't really use the actual cost because we don't know what it is till the end. And we have to start tracking costs because we need to keep the costs tracked as we go. So then we need an estimate. So what we're doing is basically saying, what do you think total overhead will be as of the end of the month? What will total overhead be? as of the end of the month, and we want to predict what it will be so that we can use that to allocate out. Uh, usually we'll start with last month, probably, and then we'll try to project 
as to whether we're going to have an increase or decrease based on future events. So anytime we have an estimate, it's probably going to be starting with past data. And then we're going to look at what's going to change in the future. And we're going to come up with estimated overhead. So we're probably going to add up all the stuff that went in the overhead last month. You know, all the indirect labor, indirect materials, all the other stuff. And then try to adjust it to what we think will be adjusted for this month and come up with our estimated. Then we're going to divide by the estimated activity base. And then what is that? What's an estimated activity base? Now, th this is based on the idea that we need something to tell us how big one job is to another. So in other words, if, if we had just, you know, if we, if we think we're going to work on 10 jobs, why can't we just take this number, our estimated total overhead and divide it by 10? If we have 10 construction jobs, we can just divide it by 10 and allocate that. And it'll be an even allocation to how many jobs we think we're going to have. But we can't really do that because even if we knew that we were only going to have 10 jobs, uh, the jobs are all going to be different in size. That's the whole point of a job cost system. They're all, they're not the same size. So how do I allocate more cost to a larger job and less cost to a smaller job? Uh, that, and how are we going to do that? So to, to do that, we have to see some kind of factor that's going to tell us how big, how relatively large one job is to another. And that's going to be the activity base. So typical activity bases, for example, is going to be like uh, direct labor or possibly the amount of material we use. So in other words, if, if we think about how much labor was used in a job, whether by cost of labor or by hours worked on the job, those are going to mean that more labor is going to be worked on larger jobs and less labor on smaller jobs, hopefully, typically. And therefore, we can use that as some kind of ratio, as a ratio to know how much of the overhead then we should allocate. We should allocate more overhead to the job that has more labor cost to it because the job that has more labor cost is probably larger and therefore deserves more overhead, which was probably actually used in the job. If And we could have the same rationale for materials. If this material, if this job used more materials, then it's probably a bigger job and it probably has more overhead that should be allocated to it. So what we're using is some type of activity base, either direct labor or, or, um, or, direct, or direct materials typically. And we're gonna use a ratio to help us allocate this. So we're gonna say this is the estimated overhead divided by whatever activity base, and then we'll use that to allocate. So let's see what that looks like. We're gonna say that our predetermined overhead rate is gonna be 1.6. So let's see what that means here. Now we're gonna take the direct labor that we had calculated by job. This is the direct labor that we have applied directly to each of these jobs. And we're gonna use that to apply out the overhead using the estimated overhead or the predetermined overhead rate we determined to be 1.6. So note that this predetermined overhead rate can be given to the total here, meaning if we look at the direct labor for all of the jobs, we're got, we've got the 4,200 summing up all the jobs. We can take that, of course, and multiply it times the 1.6. So we can take the 4,200 times 1.6, and that'll give us the 6,020. And we can multiply each one of these jobs to give us a total for each job that's going to total up to that uh, 6,720. And so that's going to be the total. Now it's important, this number here is all we need to make the journal entry because the journal entry, what we're going to do is we're going to be moving this from the overhead account to the work in process account. But we need this worksheet in order to tell us how much of that overhead should be applied to each job. So remember, every time we transfer something to work in process, it needs to be supported by the jobs and this will be the worksheet to, to do that also remember that although we're using direct labor the overhead has nothing to do with direct labor the overhead is just using direct labor as a means to tell us how big one job is in relationship to another job it's just basically a ratio analysis uh, that we can we can think of basically we're, we're basically saying um you know this this particular job is 1200 of the total divided by the total 4200, it's that percentage. If we take that percentage times the overhead, we would take this times the 6720, this number here, that's gonna give us the uh, 1920. So we're just using the relative ratios in essence here. That's what the predetermined overhead rate is based on in order to allocate 
in the proper amounts to these based on relative size of the job, relative size being determined by the direct labor uh, that's being applied to each of them. Now note that we could see this actually on the job sheet as well. So this is job number 15. This is just an example job sheet. Uh, so, but just note that we could see in the overhead section, every job sheet is going to be allocating the cost, the cost being direct materials, labor, and overhead. And we could note on the overhead here that it's going to be 160 or 1 1.6 of the direct labor. And so these numbers on this particular job cost sheet are just taking this number times 160% or 1 1.6. And we could sum those up as well. Also note again, this looks like an invoice. It's not uh, really an invoice here, but it, an invoice could use this as a basis to it, meaning this would be the cost. This is the actual cost to us of the, of the production of the inventory. We might use this and say, well, we, we mark it up 30 or 40 percent, and that's how we come up to the, the cost. So if we had a uh, job cost in terms of construction, that would be a fairly transparent way to do this. We'd say, hey, uh, this is how much direct material. This is how much direct labor. This is our overhead. This is the total cost. We're going to mark it up, you know, 30 or 40 percent or whatever our markup is. That's the revenue we get. Uh, that's one way that we could construct an invoice and that would be based on this information. Note that the overhead, no matter how you look at it, is going to be the, diff the most difficult thing to, uh, to explain because people are going to say, well, uh, you know, you took the direct labor and multiplied it times 160 and charged me for direct labor twice, it seems like. It seems like you charged me three times, you know, <laughs> two and a half times for direct labor or something like that. And it's like, and, and the response to that, of course, is no, the overhead is not anything to do with the direct labor. The direct labor, again, is just used as a ratio. It's an estimate for us to allocate out the overhead uh, to jobs based on relative size, based on how much labor is being used in them. Okay, so if we take a look at the journal entry then, we're going to say that the work in process is going to be debited, increasing the work in process. We're basically moving this information from the factory overhead to the work in process. So work in process has a debit balance. We're going to increase it with a debit because the inventory is increasing. Note that the debit is not for 7,100 and, and you might ask, well, why isn't it for the amount that's in factory overhead? And the, the reason for that is one, uh, we wouldn't know this number again until the end of the month. And so uh, as we as we do this allocation, we may do this allocation multiple times for each job. And so we wouldn't know exactly what's in factory overhead. Therefore, we had to make an estimate. The estimate is never going to match what actual factory overhead is. It can only be close unless we were perfect, which is unlikely. <laughs> so that would be so it's always going to be somewhat off here. So we're going to we're going to put it into work in process and we're going to take it out of, of factory overhead. This being an inventory type account, an asset account has a debit balance. We're going to decrease it doing the opposite thing to it a credit so we're moving it from here to here from one inventory account in essence to another whenever we move something to the work and process account it needs to be able to be supported by the jobs if we post the journal entry then we're going to say that the work and process account here is going to be debited in the gl so the gl for the work and process was at 6430 it's going to increase by that 6720 to 13,150. So that's what we have here. And then the factory overhead is going to be credited, decreasing it. It was at 7,100. It's going to go down by 6,720 to 380. That's what's left in factory overhead. Now we're going to say that for this particular month, this is all the activity in factory overhead. So we, we've done all uh, the, the we've allocated all the costs, the actual costs to the uh, factory overhead and or we've actually incurred the actual costs and recorded them. And then we've allocated those costs out to work and process and to the related jobs in order to allow us to allocate to the to the to the work and process. Remember that the work and process account needs to be supported not only by a GL account, but actually by the jobs as well. And that's why we couldn't uh, post directly to work in process when we incurred these costs, but th had to put them into the factory overhead and then use this allocation method to know which jobs we can apply to so that we can do this kind of lump sum journal entry. This lump sum journal entry is going to be supported by, backed up by job cost sheets.